Hey, how, how are you? you doing? Good, good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I appreciate you for taking the time to chat with me today. About oh, my pleasure. Same, same, same to you. Yeah, yeah. I wasn't, I was going into it expecting that it was going to, you know, to get our heartstrings and stuff, but I still don't think I was, I was embraced for all of the emotions that the film delivers. So it was a very, yeah. very, oh, thank you. Thank you. That's a, that's high praise. You know, it, yeah. When you see the trailer, you kind of get the, the, the sort of theme that we're going for, but there's so much nuance and specificity to not only the young boy's character, but my character. Yeah. Um, so there's, there, yeah, there's a lot there. And, and even further than that, you know, the, the mother and mm -hmm. the teacher and the, you know, like it's, it's, um, we had great, we had great talent uh, in this movie. So yes. I was excited yeah. to be a part Absolutely. of it. Absolutely. So I want to dive right in. You've been voice acting in several animated films over the past few years, but this is your first, you know, like meaty major live action role in a while. So what about this project um, drew you back and made you want to be a part of it? Um, when, when I found the script, the script was sent to me and, um, I, uh, I immediately, I mean, I was, I became emotional just reading it. Mm -hmm. Um, and I just, I felt like there were a few things. I mean, a wonderful opportunity, uh, first off to play, uh, this character, um, with, uh, like you alluded to some, some more meat on the bone and um, kind of kind of uh, my first opportunity to play uh, a solid sort of lead by myself. Mm -hmm. um, and, and then the, the overall message and themes of the movie, which are, you know, acceptance and self-love and redemption. Mm -hmm. um, I, I felt that there was a modernity to it that our writer Cheryl Guerrero had accomplished with taking these two characters and bringing them together and and um and really you know while pulling at at your heartstrings giving you a sense that uh of hopefulness with the idea of acceptance and self-love and, and and redemption and you know, to me, it's kind of everything I'd want to see in, in a dramatic film, so. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And there are a lot of emotional and heartwarming scenes in the movie, as we stated. Which one was your favorite to shoot and why? Oh, wow. Uh, that's tough to pick. I mean, I love the tea party scene Yeah. where you have this, you know, kind of burly man <laughs> who's completely out of his element and trying to relate to, you know, these kids uh, who having this make-believe tea party. Um, I, I, there's a, there's a, a scene uh, that I really love between uh, Eddie and Sam, uh, which is uh, Eddie takes him to have his first root beer float. Mm -hmm. And and also it's a it's kind of a little bit of a turning point in the movie and their relationship because uh, you know it's the first time that I think I think Eddie really gives Sam some advice in a fatherly way in a paternal way mm -hmm. um, and I think it, it, it's a it's a real turning point for my character um, to kind of feel confidence in himself and mm -hmm. and and some meaning that this little uh boy uh is giving him meaning to his life you know yeah and speaking of turning points there was one um scene in particular i feel like it gave me anxiety but like in a good way when um he didn't know whether he was going to go in the house where they were playing and she was like come on in come on in and, uh, yeah. <laughs> and paul was just sitting in the car and i'm like i'm like this is like the <laughs> this most awkward situation. Like, <laughs> yeah. is he getting out of the car? Is he not? And yeah. I think no, to the point to the point that he's actually stuttering to himself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's like, he's like, I think I'm he's like, I think I want to get out, but I don't want to get out. And I'm like, I think that was also a point where he was like, that was one of the first moments where he was, I guess, 
you know, actively making an effort as right. being this person um, in his life. So I think right. that, was, that was a really good scene to me too, but it was, it was, also, it was also very funny. Yeah, and, we, try to, we try to make those scenes real, but also give you, a, you know, some of them are, are heavy. Some of the scenes are really heavy. So when you get an opportunity like that to give it a little bit of, you know, uh, a little bit of comedy or a yeah. little bit of, you know, light, lighter fare, then it, I, I find it helpful. For the yeah, and, and it's like placed in the right moments too. So that was like, that right. was like a, good, a good part to stick it in there. And Ryder Allen is such an amazing talent. And I know not all the time can you get child actors, you know, that can deliver on such, you know, this is, this is, you know, a lot of rough material and, you know, even, totally. even for older actors. So as his scene partner um, for pretty much the, the most of the movie, um, how was that dynamic and working relationship like? Well, um, to, to Fisher Stevens credit our director, um, and our producers that were allowing us sort of autonomy and, and some freedom to, to have a schedule uh, that would be super helpful to my chemistry with Ryder. We went to the producers, Fisher and I, and said, we need, I need like a month before we start shooting to be on location or in, in New Orleans, close to where we are with Ryder. Mm -hmm. uh, so that we can go through the scenes in a, in a, in a way where we don't feel rushed, but we have time to, I can build a rapport with him so that we're, when we're on set, he really feels, because I, I don't know if you know this, this is Ryder's first film. Yeah, yeah. And for anyone who, even if you're, uh, you know, an aspiring actor or a seasoned actor, I mean, being on a film set, it's built to distract the actors. Um, and, and so it was just important to Fisher and I that we could keep Ryder in a very focused place um, because he's eight and eight year olds, <laughs> you know, eight year olds get, will be eight year olds, you know, and, and um, he, but he has an intuition uh, that, that not many uh, young actors have. And, he also was just so excited to be doing this that that we we were able to um, we were able to continue to talk about the scenes and and if it was if it was a scene that was a little bit lighter, you know, we I would I would pull him aside and we'd play games or 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 I would tell jokes or we would dance around. You know, and if it was more of an emotional scene, I would sit with him and we would have people get out of our space and we would sit together quietly and and I would talk to him in a very serious way about what we were, what where we were now, you know, as our characters and to his credit and his, um, and like I said, his intuition, he just stayed in, in right in pocket with me. And, and um, so that's why I, I feel like I feel like the chemistry uh, between the two of us came together so well on camera because we did have that time to build a rapport, which I think is imp really important in any film. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And I have one last question. Um, so we have been in the pandemic. I saw a tweet the other day about how we're reaching like one year um, quarantine anniversary from being in this global quarantine anniversary. <laughs> wow. Wow, that's a fr that's a word. <laughs> well, I mean, it came out of, it came out of 2020 and that's the another year that <laughs> a lot of things came out of the year we weren't expected, but sure. you know, we've been in quarantine for a long time, been dealing with this pandemic for a long time. And amid the pandemic, we had all of these uprisings against uh, police brutality that swept across the globe. And it began to hit Hollywood with people talking about um, being candid about their experiences, whether it was in film and TV, whether it was in music, just entertainment in general, um, about their experiences and how the industry could uh, do better. So as a prominent, you know, non-person of color in the industry, how do you think that Hollywood systems 
and people who are in these positions of privilege can do better at helping the people who are disadvantaged in the industry? Right. Um, so um, I, 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 I guess that um, it's a word that's really, um, I feel like has come into the consciousness of people who are not people of color, who want very much to be allies. Mm -hmm. um, um, the word uh, that I, I keep feel, feeling like, um, maybe many people aren't talking about it, but it's complicit. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and I think because it felt like when the year began, you would maybe hear stories of like, well, you know, I, I, I am an ally, I'm, I'm not an enemy. And it's mm -hmm. like, well, I, I think the level of consciousness has been raised. Um, and this, you know, I'm hopeful about it. I think the level of consciousness has been, array, has been raised about the specifics of how to be an ally. Mm -hmm. You know, that uh, when you look at our film with Palmer, a film about bullying, yeah. you know, which has been a big theme for a couple of years. Um, that's why this movie is so timely. Um, it, it um, you know, you, you realize, I, I think people's level of consciousness to say like, oh, I can be proactive, you know, in being, being an ally. And I think as, you know, as it's apropos to your question, um, I think, I think, you know, the producers of Hollywood and because you're asking specifically about Hollywood, you know, right? How can we tell those stories, right? Like mm -hmm. we, you know, the producers and the writers um, have to, uh, and the actors, you know, it, within the discussions have to raise our, you know, level of awareness and con consciousness to say, we have to develop stories about diversity. We have to develop stories about inclusion um, and even further than that, like, let's develop stories about what allyship really looks like, mm -hmm. you know, like, let's tell that story because really, I mean, if you look at, if you look at Palmer, it's not, it's not, you know, we're not, we're not uh, saying it from a pulpit, you know, for example, but you're looking at a, 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 a man, my character, who comes out of prison and probably with a level of ignorance um, that we may be used to seeing mm -hmm. in a lot of people and, and a young boy turns him around, raises his consciousness, raises his level of awareness, and in turn gives him meaning, gives him a, 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 an idea of self-love that he didn't know he had. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, like I said, it's, it's, it's there in, in, in the story. And I'm not praising our film for saying like, look, we did it. I'm, I'm saying that when you look at it, it's a small kernel of something that we can do. But I think that if we can raise our, 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 the specificity of what characters of, of, of diversity, um, all the facets, you know, uh, break stereotypes um, and, and, and tell those specific stories of what, of what life looks like um, that we haven't seen. And, and, even, and even, more, even more than that, what allyship looks like. Yeah. Um, I, to me, I, I'd, be, I'd, I'd be first in line to play, play a character in a movie like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I'm also glad that you brought up, you know, um, the word complicit, because I feel like that's kind of a, a, a change that's happened, because in years prior, people were thinking about how to be non-racist, not just racist, but or non-sexist, non-insert here, but now it's learning how to be anti-racist and right. anti-sexist and, right. like, you know, dismantling those stereotypes. Um, right. And down, like, how can we, you know, definitively 
um, work to, you know, better these issues without just, you know, being saying like, okay, that's, you know, I'm not racist or like, I'm not sexist, but like, how do you actually apply that? And I think that's, you know, learning complicity and things like that are definitely, you know, helping that way. So, yeah. yeah, I mean, l listen, you can, I, I think of a specific scene in, in our movie, you know, not, not to keep making it just about the movie, but, <laughs> but, but I think of a scene in our movie where these other children are bullying uh, uh, our character, Sam, mm -hmm. and there are a couple of kids standing there that maybe this is a new experience for yeah. them to be, uh, you know, uh, at risk of finding a better term, sitting on the sideline, watching it happen, mm -hmm. and they're children, right? So, so it's a very, it's a very pure way to, uh, to have a scene like that. But I think, you know, it could be maybe a, you know, a, a, an example of, uh, like you said, um, you know, being proactive, being anti, not just non. Yeah. You know, and, and, and I, I do think, I, I, I think I've seen a lot of, a lot of people, uh, you know, in, in my conversations that are not people of color that have said, well, I want to help. And that's where you start, right? Like that's, that's a start. And, and that makes me hopeful. And so, you know, like like you were like you were alluding to in hollywood we have to tell those stories you know we have to get behind those stories and you know they have to have as much support as as you know and fiscal support and emotional support and you know media support as you know movies that we've seen in the past yeah